Today, it's James Knight here to speak with you about the book Back on Track. It's the life and times of this fella here, Bernie Shakeshaft, a bit of a larrikin, a knockabout bloke who's had some rough and tumble events happen to him in his life. This year, 2020, he was named the Australian Local Hero of the Year. Now, that's recognition for all the work he has done over many years with the disadvantaged youth of Australia, particularly in northern New South Wales, where he runs, he in fact founded the program Backpack Youth Works that looks after kids who, as Bernie himself says, have fallen through the cracks of the mainstream, whether it's from broken homes or unimaginable beginnings, or just not fitting into standard education. And that's a very common theme for many of the kids in the program, primarily boys, but there are some there are some girls as well. So this story goes right back to Bernie's beginning, and then it evolves into a story about how Backtrack started. Now, just a bit of background on Backtrack. Bernie takes in kids who, as I said, have done it pretty tough in their life, and they've copped more than their fair share of knocks. And Bernie and his very, very determined, eager group of employees, and in fact, the broader community of Armadale have pitched together to really help these kids, normally adolescents, and they give them life skills that they can then go out and take into the world or use while developing themselves at Backtrack. These skills may be working with dogs, working dogs, farm dogs. That is, in fact, instrumental, central to the program. Welding skills, fencing, how to build. A lot of them are manual labour skills, but the kids get a real sense of purpose out of it. And for many of them, they get a sense of belonging. And this program, Backtrack Youth Works, is doing extraordinary work in Armidale, and it's now stretching well beyond the northern tablelands of New South Wales to help other kids who need a bit of a hand in other parts of the bush. In writing this book, I interviewed about 100 people. So there are many quotes and many different stories in it. So to choose one or two pieces to read to you is a little difficult. So I thought the best place would be to start at the very beginning, just to give you a, a little bit of an outline of the type of fella Bernie is and the type of kids Bernie works with. Now, this book has its share, it's fair to say, of um, great Australian vernaculars in it. In other words, a bit of swearing. And I have deleted the one or two swear words in this opening section, but you can use your imagination if you like. Armadale, 2018, the hometown of Backtrack. The Norwester blows across the hills. It scuffs up dust, bends yellowing grasses, and sends a shiver through the lustreless leaves of the eucalypts. A few clouds hurry by. Earlier in the morning, some had teased the earth, but the rain that fell wasn't enough to wet a pebble. It's the middle of a long winter. It has been a much longer drought. A dark grey Holden Colorado dual cab heads out of town. Its driver wears a blue, a black puffer jacket, a blue woolen jumper, blue shirt, blue thermal vest and dusty grease-stained blue jeans. His eyes are also blue. So is his language. I'll sort it out later, he says to someone over the phone's loudspeaker. His delivery is direct but not brusque. He holds a steaming cup of coffee that has failed to wash away the nicotine gravel in his voice. Even when sitting, he appears lanky, skinny legs, long arms, bony fingers. His skin is scarred and blotchy, and his reddened face is framed by wrinkles across his forehead and a grey speckled gingery beard on his chin. He drives further out of town, occasionally easing his work boot off the accelerator to look at a shed a business, a paddock, a fence. He knows them all. Finally, he heads over a crest on the bitumen and finds what he has been looking for. A small mob of pregnant Angus cows as black as the morning are dawdling along the side of the road. Behind them, 
A teenage boy sits on an idling motorbike. When the boy notices the Colorado pull over, he stops, starts on the throttle until he reaches the vehicle. The driver winds down a window. Good to see you got the warning signs out. Well done. The boy nods. His eyebrows are stitched together by the squeeze of a balaclava and tight helmet. Pimples and freckles dot his face. A drop of snot hangs off the tip of his nose. A short exchange follows. Where are you poking them to? That gully over there. Much traffic? Nah. You keeping an eye out in case one of them starts dropping a calf? Yeah. The boy's answers can barely be heard above the wind. All right, just one more thing, says the driver. What would happen if that helmet fell off? Um, uh, I, I could hurt my head. Well, then it might be an idea to tie up the chin strap. The boy with his fingers stiffened by the cold does as he should. That's the way, says the driver. Stay safe, all right? The Colorado moves off and for a moment the driver watches the boy in his rear vision mirror. Then he does what life has taught him to do. He looks ahead, as Bernie Shakeshaft always has. So there we go. That's one section of the book. And I'd just like to share with you one more, which takes you into the very life of one of the boys in the program. He sits and swivels in Bernie's black office chair, side to side, side to side, always moving. It's hard to tell if he's nervous or in complete control. He has soft whiskers on his chin and scars on his arms, but it's his eyes that catch my attention. They are hard and knowing. They've seen. When compared with many other backtrack boys, the broad themes of his life are common. Trouble at school, wrong crowd, suspensions, a spiral downwards. A spiral. And then some. I was living in a car when I was 13 until I was about 15. Nearly a year and a half I lived in a car for. Just an old car that didn't run. I had all my clothes in the boot. That was when I was going downhill. That was when I was doing it my hardest. I was on a lot of heavy drugs. I was on ice. And I was selling a bit of drugs as well, ice and cocaine and weed. I started hanging out with older boys. Dad has been in jail most of my life and mum was, I don't know, it's been pretty rough for me. I never really got to see dad much and mum was never really at home, so I just done my own thing. I used to steal food from Coles and take it over to public barbecues and cook it for dinner steal loaves of bread and sausages. It was just what I knew at the time. The rough guys I was with was pretty rough. I've seen someone get shot. I've seen people stabbed. I ended up going to juvie, which is juvenile detention. When I was young, I wanted to be a police officer. And look what happened then. I'd done it pretty hard in there because I just had my first son, my first kid. So I went in there when he was a few months old. I missed out on his first birthday. Yeah, I did a pretty rough in there, away from the family. You got no one, you know. You're getting told what to do all day and locked in a room that you can't do anything about. You can't just walk down to the shop and buy an apple. It's hard to explain it to the backtrack boys. I've told them about what it's like being inside and I try and put fear into them. I tell them it's not safe for anyone. If you want to be locked in a cell 18 hours a day, what are you going to get out of that? You don't get any certificates for that. But now, it's good. It's good when I take a few boys out to build a fence or something, and I look at what they've done, and it's all perfect. And at the end of the day, I can think, I taught them that, or I helped them with that. It makes me feel pretty good, and it makes them feel good. I like work. I'd go mad without it. It keeps my mind off things. I love working. I'm saving up for a house deposit. Hopefully in a few years I'll have enough for a home loan, have enough for a deposit. That's my main goal at the moment, so I can get my own place. 
I've seen a lot of horrendous stuff. I suppose it has made me who I am today. When people say, would you take anything back in your life? I say, no, it has made me who I am. All of it made me who I am today. Our interview lasts for 20 minutes. Only after the boy has gone does the chair sit still. It's, sorry, it's, it's hard not to get emotional about some of the people you meet in this story. And once again, I, I dipped me lid to Bernie and everyone at Backtrack who are doing what they're doing with, with kids who really deserve a bit of break. So um, hats off to, to Bernie and Backtrack and hats off to all the kids in the program who are uh, stepping very slowly through their life and making positive changes. It's all in this book, Back on Track. It was a tough book to write, but it's a story that has to be told. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a good day.